Hey, g'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How. And in this video, we're gonna be installing uh, this guy. It's been sitting here in the shed for about a week, dead keen to install it. It is from TJM and it is a rear bar for the 2021 project, 2021 Isuzu D-Max, and I am pumped to install it. Basically replaces all this business here with a nice steel bar with integrated tow hook. So without further ado, let's get started. Excited for this one. I actually had a bit of a Jeep moment when I was picking this thing up thinking, how the heck am I gonna fit this sucker in? Cause it was enormous. But then I realized you, you clown, you have a ute, uh, put the tailgate down and, and away we went, hanging off, uh, hanging off the edge here, strapped down in a million places. So all good. Let's get this thing unboxed and check it out. All right, so here's our bar and all our bits. So this is it from the back and holy mackerel, there's no sort of cheap Chinese stuff going on here. This is this is really well made, pretty pretty impressed, really good welds, really good powder coat. You can see how thick the powder coat is over, over the welds, for example. Really solid unit. Not too bad, not too bad. And, and I guess the thing is, at the moment, I got this for about 1300 bucks, right? Not sponsored, my own money. And when I went to Isuzu, they were quoting me almost the same for a harness and just the tow bar. So, which is pretty much just this bit, that that was gonna be the same cost. So to me, it's Isuzu, come on guys, like you, you gotta sort us out, like what, what's going on there? Because this is, this is full quality. It's got armor that's gonna go underneath the actual tub itself to give some protection there. Full integrated rear step here. I mean, that, that is a pretty good. We've got high lift, high lift uh, jack points here as well. Really well engineered bar for about the same money. So definitely worth considering if you're getting a D-Max. Like it'd be hard to go past it, right? Anyway, let's, uh, let's have a look at the front and then get on with the install. So here's the front of the bar. Dang, this, <laughs> this thing is heavy uh, and for a while, one man army, she's uh, she's heavy, definitely unable to film uh, doing that at the same time. It's definitely a two-hander. Bit of branding, that sort of thing. Pretty, pretty cool looking, I reckon. More importantly, we have all of our sensor holes and everything ready to roll. So you can see there, that is all ready to go for swapping the sensors over and our radar unit with the correct mounting holes and what have you. So it is a ready to bolt in type kit. So our first step is basically needing to remove our step section of the bar. Now some of this may vary if you've got a X train or not. So there's a total of six in total. So underneath here we've got that's what that's what we're looking for there, these things here. So there's one there, another one there, one there, there, and so on and so forth. And then the standard sort of grab your flathead, jam him in there, and push, and that should pop him out fairly straightforward. So remove all six of these. Once you've done that, then there's a bolt in here as well that is the next thing to remove because that will enable this whole step section here to come off. All right, so you should have a total of six of these scrivets and two of those bolts. The next part, if you're on the X-Terrain, this little section here needs to come off and it is just double-sided taped on. So just take your time and just pull him off. It feels horrible doing this to the <laughs> brand new car but it should pull off a little bit like that and then it's just a matter of getting some goo remover and just removing the rest of this tape so now the next part here is to remove this guy and you can do that by pulling forward you just need to be careful of our sensors these are the parking sensors here and here if you have the x terrain so just be careful with this bit but as long as you've removed all the sections underneath, it should be a matter of pulling this forward and it should should come out. Just like that. You wanna be careful of the harness here that connects our parking sensors. So just be careful when you've got those. Now it's best to take a bit of a photo at this part because you wanna remember the orientation of the sensors here. So get your phone out, take a bit of a photo there or if you happen to be filming a how-to video like this, plenty of record. But ultimately, you want, it, you want to know the orientation here so that you can put that back in that guy the right way. So that's our next step. We want to remove our parking sensors. There's two little clips 
there and there and there is our step now the only other thing you need to do here is to remove the actual housing component of the parking sensors because we're going to reuse those in the new bar and then our brand new plastic step as crazy as it sounds can go in the bin and then once we have our sensors and sensor housings just carefully pop those off to the side so starting to look a little bit naked in the back end here so the next part is we want to start removing all this section here and it's already getting a little bit wobbly so flathead again three more of these screw it things so same story as before just a matter of screwdriver in there and popping them out so there should be six in total three on either side one of them went a wall but that's okay and our next step is the last of the parking sensors these are the outer parking sensors one on on either side there so same as before we want to unclip the harness itself which is that guy in there lucky for us Isuzu's put a yellow circle around that for some reason but next step is just to remove the actual harness itself so same exactly the same as the other one we've got our little clip in here we just need to jam that down and pull the other thing to make sure you do is mark i've just used it going to use a uh, a little nico on the back here which side like which orientation these they, they these go into they have to go back in the same way they came out as in left hand side and right hand side over there so just get a little marker and just mark the back so you know exactly which ones to put in where now you do have to remove the little housing section as well but i would recommend just waiting until this whole section comes off it's just going to be a lot easier to get but just don't forget them and that's our next step is to remove the plastic guard so removing more more of our new car this should just pull out so make sure you've got all your bits there is a bit of tape over here but it's just a matter of giving it a bit of a pull like that and it should just all the clips and everything will come off and there we go once again don't forget to get your sensor housing out of there and then this can also go in the bin so same on the other side another uh, another part for the brand new parts bin anyone needs any dmax parts so uh, send me a message interesting though i found in this one there's a little there's a little like tag and i can't really read what's on there anymore other than uh, some detail it looks like sample so I don't know if it's like a paint sample or a paint thickness 0 0.24 0 0.31 0.2 and it's got a date there of the 14th of March 2021 which I'm pretty sure the build date for this sucker was the 15th so maybe this is like a paint tag or something but uh, and cobalt blue written on the bottom there I don't know if you can see that in the camera but but there you go maybe that's part of their their quality uh, quality control or what have you on on the paint of the parts that we're now throwing out i don't know how i feel about that anyway <laughs> um starting to look a little bit uh naked starting to look a whole lot naked at the back here now we we're getting getting close to putting this little guy or big heavy guy not quite sure how i'm going to do that yet uh onto onto the rear so onto the next step and that next step is removing our radar so this this is it this is this is the radar unit that does all the fancy stuff as far as all the all the safety gear on the back obviously some on the on the front in the uh in the windshield section there as well but that's our next step we need to remove this that there is a little there is a little clippy bit, so that's really easy to remove. If you have any dramas with that, like I did on this outer sensor, just get some inox and uh, give it a good squirt and you'll find um, that loosens it up pretty well. So from there, it's just removing the harness. There's three bolts for this guy, one, two, and another guy hiding underneath here, three. So all three of those need to come off to get the take the radar unit out altogether warning 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 everywhere on all the instructions to make sure that you're super careful with this not to drop it not to sort of shock light it anything like that so really really careful definitely a two-handed job here to remove this guy and put it somewhere safe all right trucking along pretty well the next part is to remove the remainder of our factory steel not really a bumper really i guess structure to come off so then we are full naked on the back here and ready to install the bar so there are a bunch of bolts one two and then another one under here another couple under there so that's our next step to remove you will need a 14 mil this is where if you've got a 
uh, adapt DAC it is the way to go so if you've got one of those time to bust it out and uh, and remove these couple of bolts now at this point don't remove all four otherwise the bar is going to drop to the ground so just do three on either side and then I'd recommend this is definitely a two-handed job get yourself under there on a little bit of a stool or something like that support it with your uh, with your gammy knees and then zap 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 pull the hollet off just be really careful though when you are removing this last part of the harness you'll need to just disconnect to take the whole bar off and there we are there's our harness side of things we can put that aside and of course our lovely now useless rear protection bar Whew, looking empty under there now there's our spare uh, that can also go in the bin pile righto so the next step is to start putting together our rear bar putting all the bits and bobs on it so that it can go on to the d-max so the first thing we need to do uh, first order of business is the radar units so what you need to look for is these two brackets here and here and then bring them over to your radar units that you carefully put aside and they're going to go ultimately in the back here so you can see that there's the bracket there they're going to sit in there like that so that you can see your radar poking through and then we want to bolt our radar unit to these so so you want to just make sure you get the right bracket for the right radar unit now they can only go on one way here just be really careful once again you want the two bolts at the top of these brackets so it doesn't seem to be labeled or anything like that other than a left hand on the side there and a right hand so you know which side of the bar these need to go onto but as far as the radars it's pretty straightforward look for your two holes you've got a little pin there which slots in like that and then that will sit on there just like that and then as far as what you're going to need from your bolt bag there's a thousand different types but it's all good look for these little hex nuts like that you need two washers on each and one of the nylock nuts and then it's just a matter of one two three and screwing these down just keep them a little bit loose for the moment we want to make sure it's in position before we do the final talk right so this is how they look fully assembled just like that one on either side and then it's a matter of getting them in place so you want to come to your bar the harness side is going to be on the inner so you just want to line him up it does have the actual sides written in there as well just pretty hard to see that's going to sit in there just like that so that through the other side once she's all bolted in you're going to have good access uh, to the radar and the radar is still going to work perfectly so from there get a similar the similar bolt scenario as we had before with a bolt a couple of washers and one of the nylux and then install your brackets now before you go buttoning everything up here on the radar unit itself it's a matter of just making sure that it's not sort of skew if or anything like that. You've got to make sure that the housing itself is nice and square with the cutout here. So just get all that nice and square and then tighten all the nuts up. And then to finalize our radars, it's about getting the covers. You can see on the back there, there's a right way up. Just look for the TJM logo. And then you want to put the long section down here and the short part down there. So this is for this side here and it just sort of slides in behind the behind the radar unit itself gets bolted in there just like that so that's why you want the short section so it's not covering our hole there like that and then to secure those we want to get these guys here and one washer one nylock nut through she goes and lock those into place all right sweet so we've got our radars all nice and installed the next part is to install our parking sensors so we've got our inners and our outers and that's why it was important to mark on these which one was which so provided that's all done we should have four of the actual housing sections and it's recommended to paint these ones depending on what color your d-max was i'm going to hit these with some flat black to match these and then it's a matter of just coming along and pushing these guys home so they pop in just like that 
And once you've got all of those guys in, the next step is to install the actual parking sensors. Now, if you don't have rear parking sensors because of the type of DMAX that you ended up with, they do supply the blanking caps and these uh, just slot in there instead. So you can sort of plug those holes. So both ways works fine. Lay these out. We've got our right hand side and our left hand side. Just uh, obviously use your, use your markings to know which goes where and then it's a matter of just reinstalling these behind into their location. All right, radars in, parking sensors are in, and the next step, the only other step, is to install our number plate before we put the bar on. It's just much easier because you've got access to the bolts down behind. Those ones you just need to use either the existing ones that came with, or there's an extra uh, set of these guys that use these uh, serrated type nuts uh, on the back just to tighten that one on and then from there we're fully assembled we're ready to rock and roll so everything's all in the next part is using our remaining brackets and some of our stack of uh, stack of washers and big bolts to bolt the sucker onto the back of the d-max so the next step is getting this under this and I reckon that this part is the hardest of everything else. To, to this point we've just been buttoning everything up but now this has got to go under there and you've got to kind of lift this under there while bolting it together to keep it all in place while not dropping it on your foot. So definitely a two man job unless you have a completely OH&F, OHS, OHS compliant lifting device to slide that underneath and wrangle it into position. The bolts that you're gonna need is this stuff here. So this is where you need your bolts on a wire. They're to go underneath the chassis. We'll have a look at that in just a sec. Then you're gonna need these big guys. These are a uh, 18 mil. That's the, the size you're gonna need. And these are the ones that go in from the side. There's three on either side. We'll, we'll take a look at that in just a tick. Uh, so three in from the sides and then these two go into the chassis rail like that. I'll show you when we get to it and are bolted underneath from the other side. So let's have a look underneath at what we're dealing with. So here we are under the left hand side. Now you can see that underneath the chassis rail here we have two, two, uh, two holes and these are ready to accept the wire nuts that we were looking at there before. And then we have our three captive nut holes. So there's one there, there's one there, and then there's another one up the top there. So they're the ones that we're gonna use our silver bolts to bolt into, and then our other ones on a wire will go up underneath there to pop down, so we can do it up on that side as well. So you can see here on our part of the bar that connects to the chassis, this section's gonna, you can see sort of the angle happening there. That's gonna basically slide up and connect up underneath here, so that we can then get these started on the sides. So from there, it really is, a two-handed job here and definitely a, a second person so four hands for this one guys it's about sliding this under holding it up lifting it up underneath where it needs to be on these chassis rails having our silver bolts uh, handy ready to go to to get a couple started two on either side will get you there and then it's a matter of talking those up so once we've got this into place I'll show you where those bolts go so when you're all buttoned up this is what it will look like you should have one two and three and they're the they're the nuts on the sides so once they're in on both sides it's then a matter of doing the ones up underneath here so we've got one there and the other one there and that's what we're going to need our nuts on a string for there needs to be a two aside then you'll also need some of these big washers to go with and the little nylock nuts as well and then what these are for is like we were saying to go up underneath there so you actually have to feed them in through the end of the chassis rail in there so it's a bit of a mesh you can kind of see hopefully there's our end of our chassis rail just there and what we need to do is feed these guys in there so that they pop out through the holes here for us to do up that way around once you've got those bolt holes through Grab your big washer and then your nylock and that just needs to go straight on there to lock the last two bolts into place. 
Right, so these are all nice and tight now. They've got to be 77 newton meters. And the same with these guys over here. So one, two, and three, all 77 and nice and tight. So there's five in total on this side and five on the other. All right, so now that this guy is solid as a rock and fully installed, we're almost, almost done and dusted here. It's just a matter of getting the harness together along the top of the tow bar itself, a zip tie central, make sure it's nice and secure. Use the existing loom and what have you. You can, you can, uh, you can button it up across there. Reconnect all of your harnesses, knowing that this is our outer parking sensor and our radar and then our inner parking assist there as well if you have them pretty straightforward so button all that back together and then our final step is installing the little plate here that will go underneath and that's where we connect our wiring harness which is in the very next video it may already be out by the time you watch that if it is check out the video at the top if not it's coming up shortly and then this plate is basically what's set up so that we can fit the full wiring uh, loom on top of there, there's 7 or a 12 pin, but then it's also got uh, extra holes drilled so that you can fit your Anderson plug if you're running 12 volts through to a trailer, that sort of thing as well. So the bolts you're going to need are these guys, the slightly shorter ones. These already have their rivnuts nuts pre-installed, so that's pretty handy. So grab those. Then underneath the rear bar on both sides, you can have, you can have your um, harness plate on either side because there's three holes there ready to go and then there's also three holes on this side. So it depends on which way you want to run your harness. For me, I'm likely I'm putting it on this side, on the left-hand side. So you have your rib nuts uh, facing down like that and then that slots up there just like that. So you have your plug nice and tucked away up the top, ready to install. All right, guys, so there we go. That is the install of the TJM rear step bar for the 2021 Isuzu D-Max. That's it for another video, guys. I hope that you found this helpful. Now, this is number three of the build-up series. So if you want to check out all the other videos, check the playlist. You'll see all the different mods that we've been doing to the D-Max there. As always, hit the old subscribe button if you're keen to see more. Ring the little bell and that'll give you a notification every time that I upload any new content uh, onto the channel, whether it's DMAX or some of the other videos. Check out all the other videos that are on the channel while you're there. And as always, guys, I hope that you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.